Hey everyone, we are back once again with a look at the best, most interesting looking upcoming games this for the month of November. As per usual, I try to keep these lists varied, focusing not only on what I'm personally interested in, but also games I think other people might want to know about. This might be the busiest month of 2022. The main list focuses on seven games. We got a couple of JRPGs, the next God of War, a sandbox goat game, a new third person action adventure, the next big WoW expansion, and a trip into the impressive world of 40k that I am quite pumped to take. But on top of that, there are just as many games and honorable mentions that I'll touch on and a lot of these I am too really interested in. Before we dive in though, we got a brief word from today's sponsor, which is actually a game I played quite a bit of earlier this year and really enjoyed. Today's video is sponsored by V Rising. This is the open world survival game from Stunlock Studios where you play as a vampire. The game released earlier in the year, like I said, I played it a ton and really liked it. The premise is simple. You awaken as a vampire, hunting for blood to regain your strength, fighting back dangerous creatures, other players, and even the sun, all while doing the survival loop of gathering resources, crafting weapons and armor, and building a base, or in this case, a vampire stronghold. The game's got skill progression based around defeating V-Blood bosses to learn new abilities and ultimates, and it can be played with a PvE or PvP focus depending on the server you select. So V-Rising has very positive reviews on Steam. I really enjoyed this game when I played it at release. And if you feel like jumping in to try it out yourself, now is as good a time as ever because the game will be available for free. From October 28th until November the 1st, as part of a Halloween event, you can pick up V Rising for nothing. This also comes with some limited time free Halloween Castle DLC. And on top of this, Stunlock Studios is working on a massive expansion for the game coming next year, adding a brand new region, new V Blood bosses, new weapons and abilities, and overall polish to the game. So if you're interested in checking out V Rising, go ahead and use the link in the description below. Okay, so now let's go ahead and dive into this month's best looking new upcoming releases. Kicking things off is Harvestella, a fantasy life simulation RPG from Square Enix. This one is interesting. It's kind of like they took the standard JRPG formula and then threw in some Farmville. So the game starts out with you making a character waking up in this quiet little town and then doing life sim stuff. You'll till the land around your home, planting and watering seeds, once grown, you can harvest them. You can also raise and care for various animals who will produce milk, eggs, and wool. And all of these materials will be used for crafting armor, food, potions, and other consumables. But on top of that, there's also the JRPG. You will head out into the world, partaking in adventures, using one of those old school style overland maps. You'll move around the land, heading to various points of interest, different towns, settlements, and dungeons. In the towns, you can chat and trade with NPCs, helping them out, completing various sites task, advancing the main story, and then also taking on dangerous threats. Combat is in the typical Square Enix action style. It features a job system or classes that you're able to actually seamlessly swap between in the middle of a fight. There are options like the fighter, who's a melee brawler that uses a sword. There's the shadow walker, an assassin who deals critical damage with twin blades, or a mage who obviously specializes in magic. And then depending on the enemies you're fighting, you can just swap between whatever they are weakest against from your available jobs, your available classes. The overall premise of the game is that there is a world ending threat known as Quietus that's descended upon your peaceful lands. Things are getting progressively worse and through the changing seasons, you must travel the world picking up allies who will help you put a end to the danger. Harvestella launches on November 4th. It is coming to PC and Switch for $59.99. God of War Ragnarok. This is the sequel to the much beloved 2018 reboot of Sony's God of War franchise. The game follows Kratos and Atreus on a journey to each of the nine realms in search of answers as they prepare for the prophesized battle that will end the world. Along the way, you'll explore all of the mythical landscapes, gathering allies and facing fearsome enemies in the form of Norse gods and monsters as the threat of Ragnarok grows closer. So that is the story. What do we know about the game? Well, it's going to feature the same fluid, heavy hitting action combat as its predecessor with a few updates and improvements. The developer actually touched on this, saying that as a team, they've worked hard to take the learning from the God of War 2018 reboot and improve upon the combat to feel fresh yet familiar. So with Ragnarok, one of their main goals was to push player choice in combat, whether that is through hard hitting combos, a mastery of the elements, or clever defensive tactics. They said that we'll find plenty of opportunities to fight alongside the duo in ways that feel unique and expressive. So to this end, we've got access to things like new and different types of shields, each with their own unique defense 
defensive options and abilities. There are new move sets available for every weapon in the game. On top of that, Atreus has some new abilities at his disposal, like smacking things with his bow. Also, there's going to be a host of new enemies to battle, all inspired by Norse mythos. Some noteworthy ones include the antagonist Freya, Thor, and Fenrir. I do hope, though, Fenrir is a friend because he's an adorable dog, giant dog. <laughs> and then also, the story recap for the game implied that Ragnarok's setting has us visiting all nine realms in the game. This includes new areas in the regions from the prior title, but also the additional three realms that were not seen in the 2018 reboot. Oh, and a couple of things. Uh, stuff's already begun leaking as people have gotten early copies of the game, so watch out for that if you want to avoid story spoilers. But also, there was like a five hours long hands-on demo event that a bunch of different people and press outlets partook in, and a lot of impressions have come out. And generally, it's pretty positive. It is more God of War, but better, improved upon, and new. God of War Ragnarok will be launching on November 9th. It is coming to PlayStation for $69.99. This is Sony's new established base price. PC release is expected later down the road, although nothing has been officially revealed for release date as of yet. Valkyrie Elysium. This is the latest entry in the Valkyrie series, but taking things in a new direction. This particular game is a third person action RPG. It's published by Square Enix, uh, and it looks pretty neat, I would say. We take on the role of a Valkyrie crafted by Odin and tasked with finding and purifying the lost souls before Ragnarok, the end times arrive. Two games revolving around Ragnarok, funny. <laughs> Being an action game, it has a lot of what you will expect. You'll string together various attack types while dodging enemy strikes. You've got access to a variety of melee weapons like swords and spears, along with elemental attacks like fire and ice. There's a combo system, an ultimate meter called the arts gauge, where landing attacks and maintaining combos will fill this up. And then once full, Valkyrie can perform these powerful special attacks known as divine arts. Also, there are companions that will aid you in battle. You will summon in these strong warrior spirits that will help damage enemies or imbue you with powerful boosts. And in keeping up with traditional RPG tradition, you'll upgrade your stuff. Weapons, skills, summons, and divine arts can all be upgraded and enhanced. Now, the initial reveal of this game back in March of this year kind of landed with a thud. I saw a fairly muted reaction, but it seems like most recent trailers published and the latest gameplay made the game look a lot better and people do seem more interested. Combat seems competent from what they've shown. I like the look overall. I think some of the environments and characters are pretty cool. Overall, just seems like a cool looking game. I hope it turns out well. Valkyrie Elysium launches on November 11th. It's coming to PC and PlayStation for $59.99. Goat Simulator 3 is a brand new third person sandbox adventure game where you play as a goat. Just like the original title, you will headbutt, lick, and triple jump your way across the great island of San Angora. Now with all new areas, challenges, and events to discover. This is basically just just a sandbox game that has funny physics and all sorts of stuff, things to engage with in, and interact with in the environment. You explore around the world, you complete challenges, you partake in events, there are even mini games, and just a lot of stuff to mess around with and goof around with. It's kind of like, it feels like a Just Cause game, but as a goat on a smaller scale. And it also doesn't take itself too seriously. It's really meant to just kind of be silly sandbox physics-based fun. The game's got a wide array of different goats to pick from. Tall goats, stripy goats, angry goats, wacky goats. There's a lot of customization and even ability infused gear and you can play with friends it has four player co-op locally or online and um actually this is a sequel even though they're calling it ghost simulator 3 it's just supposed to be funny the original title launched back in 2014 and it was a pretty big hit like especially youtubers and streamers a lot of content creators really really enjoyed it it's good for goofy silly group focused fun if i had friends i'm sure i'd play with them too but beyond that though what's really cool and part of the reason that this game sits still today at a very positive rating is it's had a ton of really interesting DLC like Goat Z, which was a zombie survival update or MMO simulator, which is what you expect. It adds like MMO RPG elements, really cool stuff, lots of great support. And hopefully Goat Simulator 3 sees that same level of support post launch. This game will be launching on November 17th, coming to PC, PlayStation and Xbox for $29.99. Evil West is a narrative driven third person action game. You play as an agent of the Vampire Hunting Institute tasked with scouring the American frontier to eliminate a mysterious newly emerged threat. You travel around chasing down targets, searching for clues and eliminating everything in your path. As you progress through the campaign, you will move through these rather linear kind of semi open areas with some branching paths. There'll be places to climb in the terrain or swing across gaps. There'll be spots to explore here and there, but it's not an open world game. It is a linear game. You're mostly moving from one combat area to the next, taking on any groups of enemies there and then looking around for currency and loot before heading to the next area. And beyond
on the story, you are, yeah, mostly focused on engaging combat. It's third person action that mixes melee and ranged. You got an array of weapons and tools to take on the vampire threat. There's the gauntlet powered by lightning, which is good for defense, but can toss enemies around as well. A revolver, which is reliable and great for close range with rapid fire. A rifle, which is a heavy hitting long range ability. You face off against a host of different enemy types from rival human gangs to vampires, werewolves, leechers, and highborns. And the game seems to be set in a pretty wide range of locales as you move through that American frontier. We've seen things like desert, snow, and forest regions, and then also otherworldly places with like upside down pyramids underground deep below. Pretty cool and occultish looking stuff here. Uh, there's a progression system. You can upgrade your weapons and various tools. You'll also unlock perks to improve things. And the game can be played solo, but also has the option for co-op with a friend. From what I've seen, this looks pretty cool. Gameplay seems weighty with some neat animations and sound effects. I really dig the setting and theming too. Evil West will be launching on November 22nd, coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox for $49.99. The latest World of Warcraft expansion, Dragonflight, comes with the typical suite of new MMO expansion content. Brand new zones, story quest lines, dungeons, and raids while you look to collect gear. On top of that though, there is a handful of new systems and features. There's a new playable race, Drakthir, that also comes with a brand new class, the Evoker. It's a hero class, kind of like Death Knights. It'll start at level 58 with its own specific starting zone, and they wield the magic of the five dragon flights, the Evoker class. It's got two specs, Devastation, which is a ranged DPS spec, and Preservation, which is a healing spec. It also introduced a new type of spell called Empowered Spells, where you hold them down. The longer you hold it, the stronger it gets. They can also glide, kind of like the Demon Hunter, and with that, they can fly around and cast spells mid-air. This will also introduce a talent system revamp. They're going back to the classic skill trees, split into two sections. There will be your class tree with different class utility, but it's also the spec tree where you focus on performing whatever particular role, be it damage, tanking, or healing. They're hoping that this encourages players to make different combinations. There will, of course, be a meta. There will, of course, be min-maxing, but they're trying to open up more diversity in selection type. Dragonflight also introduces a UI revamp and overhaul, changing it from the ground up with a new edit mode feature to move, tweak, and change stuff around. WoW is continuing its uh, tradition of implementing a lot of the popular UI mods that exist into the base game. There's going to be profession changes. This is actually kind of cool as they look to deliver more on the fantasy and identity of being a crafter. They've got things like new gear types for every profession with dedicated slots, things like mining outfits, hats, picks, and a backpack that you'll automatically switch to when you mine a node, for example. Then there is dragon riding. This is different from basic flying mounts with new animations and functions, a brand new movement system that is meant to add a sense of like weight, physics, and gravity, and momentum. This basically looks like they are, well, they are taking from the highly successful Guild Wars 2 mount system. Still to this date, the best implementation of mounts in any MMO, honestly, any RPG that I've ever played. And it's just really good. And honestly, I'm happy to see more games add it. So yeah, a new WoW expansion. Uh, I expect to get about as much as I do from every WoW expansion, which most of the time equates to one to three months of checking out the new content, leveling up, going into maybe engaging in PVP, trying to rank up, do some competitive stuff. Uh, and then also going through the PVE as long as my friends play, I will join them. We'll make a guild and we will progress through probably the first raid and then take a break and maybe come back for the second raid, so on and so on. I'm excited. It's always fun to play some more of one of the many MMOs that I enjoy. World of Warcraft Dragonflight will be launching on November 28th, priced at $49.99. Warhammer 40k Darktide is a first person co-op focused action combat game developed by Fat Shark, the creators of Vermintide. They aim to take the best bits of that series, add a whole lot of new stuff and then bring it into the 40k universe. And from what I've seen and what I've played so far, they are doing just that. I spent a ton of time with the recent beta and despite a few major concerns, mostly I really, really enjoyed the experience. I think this thing is shaping up great. A couple things here. One of the first big differences in Dark Tide is that it has a character creator, whereas Vermintide had named distinct characters you played as. Dark Tide lets you make your own version of the game's four classes, be it the Ogren, Veteran, Psyker, or Zealot. You'll have a variety of different customization faces, hairdos, all of that, as well as six different personality choices per class to choose from. After creating a character and playing through a prologue, you're then introduced to the Morningstar, this orbiting spaceship that acts as, your, as a base of operations. It's also basically a social hub. You'll see other players running around. You'll pick up quests. You'll chat with NPCs. You'll be able to sell and craft gear. And then there's the mission board. And this is where you actually get to playing the game. You get to select from a rotating option of levels with various difficulties, as well as a host of parameters aimed at keeping replayability and 
variety high. The gameplay in Dark Tide is familiar to anyone who's played Vermintide. It's that same system. You and your party hack your way through hordes of enemies, working together to take on tough and evasive enemies, rescuing teammates who get trapped, doing the various side tasks, fighting bosses, all while progressing towards the mission's main objectives. And although you will be doing plenty of melee hacking and slashing, Dark Tide does have much more of a ranged focus. About half the time, you should be shooting enemies with a variety of ranged weapons. Ammo will be scarce though, not nearly as restrictive as it was in Vermintide. The developer has basically said an early test, they expect it to, yeah, be like 50-50. A lot of times you're shooting high value targets who are far away and mailing through most of the hordes of enemies. There is of course a progression system as well. Uh, after finishing each mission, you're awarded with some random gear as well as experience. You will level up. This unlocks new skills to improve your stats and mix things up a bit. And then also the gear comes in a variety of rarities. You'll have basic gear and then rare gear that you can collect. Yeah, I am quite excited for this game. Like I said, I played a lot of it. And even though it was a limited version, I really loved it overall. Some major questions remain though, and there are some concerns. Not sure how much content the game's gonna have at launch and how replayable it will be after the first few days or the first week or two. And then also performance. Uh, this wasn't an issue in the preview that I played, but once the public beta came out, huge performance issues, big, big uh, point of pain for a lot of people. Hopefully, of course, that gets ironed out. But in general, I am positive and looking forward to this title. Warhammer 40k Dark Tide launches on November 30th. It is coming to PC and Xbox for $39.99. Also, they're having what is basically a soft launch. They're calling it the pre-launch beta starting on November 7th for anyone who pre-orders. Okay, so that does it for the main list. But as I said at the top, there are just as many uh, games on the honorable mentions. And a lot of these are really solid looking and things you should consider and keep an eye on. First up, there is Die by the Blade. This is a one verse one sword fighting game. It's like rock, paper, scissors duels where you're trying to dodge, parry, and play mind games to outplay your opponent. But also its focus is on setting up for one hit kills. The game has no health bars. Basically, if you're the one who lands a solid strike, you are going to win. There's a variety of weapons, each with their own unique move sets and play styles. It's got local and online one versus one multiplayer. There's a practice mode as well as tournament mode where you can progress through the ranks and see where you land amongst the whole community. And there's also a story with a single player campaign. Pretty cool, interesting looking game. And uh, yeah, this launches on November 3rd. The Entropy Center is a first person action puzzle game. It's kind of like a portal. You go into rooms, you will be presented with a set of circumstances and obstacles, and you must solve the puzzle in order to progress to the next room. However, unlike portal, you're not making portals. You've got this tool that can move objects as well as freeze them and rewind time. This thing looks fantastic. I'm actually really, really impressed. The Entropy Center launches on November 3rd. Sonic Frontiers is an open world action adventure game that aims to take the high speed platforming Sonic formula, but bring it to an open world. They're doing so with these large expansive zones called the Ancient Islands. There are five of them in the game, each set in these visually distinct locations and full of stuff to do. There will of course be a lot of platforming, various collectibles, challenges, and combat between fighting basic enemies in the world, but also large scale boss battles. Then beyond the open world stuff, there's a system of cyberspace where essentially you're teleported into a more classic Sonic experience that's all about speed and platforming. Game looks pretty cool. It did have an early kind of rough showing. People weren't too impressed with the early footage, but some recent hands-on impressions have been overall positive. Sonic Frontiers launches on November 8th. And a couple other things I want to mention briefly here, there is Warzone 2, the sequel to Call of Duty's massively successful Battle Royale spinoff. This is going to bring new maps and gameplay features, as well as a revamp to the overall experience. Uh, the Devil in Me is the latest entry in the Dark Pictures anthology. This is a narrative-driven horror game, which looks pretty neat. Gungrave Gore is the stylish third-person shooter with over-the-top action and characters. It's a single-player romp, basically. They said the campaign is roughly 12 hours. This is interesting looking. And there's a couple of titles entering early access that I thought were of note. King's Hunt is a new third person MOBA with this high fantasy medieval setting. And then Soulstone Survivors is this top down action roguelike where you progress through stages, fighting off hordes of enemies and powering up along the way. And that just about wraps up this month's list. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoy it. And yeah, uh, we'll see what happens with this. Uh, a few lists in the past few months, games have gotten like delayed last minute or after I uh, uploaded the video, but I think everything on this list is set in stone to launch this month. Fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. But either way, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.